Hi guys, today I want to talk to you about elastic collisions and using the relative speeds approach to problems. So for all elastic collisions, the relative speed of approach is equal to the relative speed of separation. So here we've got uh, u1 minus u2. So u1 is the initial velocity of the first object. And then u2 is the initial velocity of the second object. And that's equal to uh, v2, which is the final velocity of the second object, minus the final velocity of the first object. And if this equation is true, our elastic collision, well, our collision must be elastic. And I'm, I'm going to prove to you why uh, at the end of this presentation, but let me give you some examples first. Okay, so here's an example. So uh, we've got a ball, the uh, kind of pink colored ball, u1, that's traveling at 5 meters per second, and I've got u2. Uh, and that's just stationary. And then after these balls collide, well, V1, the, the final velocity of the pink ball is now going backwards with 2 meters per second, so it's minus 2 meters per second. And then the red ball is going off with 3 meters per second. Now, uh, I've set this up so this is going to be true, uh, but I just want to show you the process. Okay, so this is going to be an uh, elastic collision. So we're going to use our first part of our equation, so U1 minus U2. That's equal to 5 minus 0, which is equal to 5 meters per second. And then afterwards, well, we're going to use uh, v2 minus v1, which is going to be equal to 3 minus and then minus 2. So minus minus 2 is plus 2, which gives us 5. So we've got 5 to begin with, 5 afterwards. So the relative speed of approach did equal the relative speed of separation. Therefore, we have got ourselves an elastic collision. And then this method is so much nicer than going through uh, half mv squared uh, for every single object, looking at the kinetic energy of every single object, it's a much faster approach. It's, and you know, in an exam, time is not on your side, so I, I'd rather use this. Also, note you don't even need to know what the masses of the objects are. Uh, it's not when you see the proof, you don't need to know what the masses of the objects are, you just need to know u1 minus u2, uh, is it, uh, if it's equal to v2 minus v1 then we've got ourselves an elastic collision. Okay, the proof. Now, you don't need to learn this for the exam. I just thought I'd add this here just if you, for your own interest. So firstly, for an elastic collision, we know that the kinetic energy must be conserved. So half m1u1 squared plus a half m2u2 squared is equal to a half m1v1 squared plus a half m2v2 squared. Okay, I'm gonna multiply everything by two just to get rid of the half. And I end up with m1u1 squared plus m2u2 squared plus m1v1 squared plus m2v2 squared. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do now is put uh, the m1s, anything with the m1 to the left and anything with the m2 to the right. And then just to tidy it up, put everything in brackets. And this is what I get. So I get m1, uh, open brackets, u1 squared minus v1 squared, close brackets is equal to m2 open brackets v2 squared minus u2 squared. Okay, close brackets. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is divide by m2 on both sides and then also divide by uh, what's in on the left in brackets, the u1 squared minus v1 squared. And I end up with this. And I'm, this is why I'm just going to stop with uh, using the uh, kinetic energy formula. And we're going to look at momentum now and then we're going to come back to this. But just remember, uh, I've got this, I've rearranged our uh, kinetic energy formulas uh, to be but to give us m1 over m2, okay? And then we'll have a look what's going to happen next, okay? So, next up, we, for conservation of momentum, we know m1u1 plus m2u2 equals m1v1 plus m2v2. Like I did with the kinetic energy formula, I'm going to put all the m's on one, m1s on one side and m2s on the other. So I get this, I get m1, open brackets, u1 minus v1, close brackets, equals m2, open brackets, v2 minus u2, close brackets. Uh, and again, like I did with the previous uh, slide, uh, I'm going to divide both sides by m2, and this time I'm also going to divide both sides by m1 minus v1, and I get this. Now, we know that this is now equivalent to... Uh, v2 squared minus u2 squared all divided by u1 squared minus v1 squared. Okay, uh, quite quite a mouthful some of these equations. Uh, okay, next slide. 
So we know that these two things are equal. And now I'm just going to simplify uh, u1 squared minus v1 squared. That's the same as saying uh, u1 plus v1, all in brackets, and multiplied by in brackets u1 minus v1. And same with the, uh, the top there, v, v2 squared minus u2 squared. Well, that's the same as saying v2 plus u2, all in brackets, multiplied by v2 minus u2, all in brackets. And what we find is uh, these terms cancel. Let me just go back. So we've got, on the left-hand side, we've got uh, v2 minus u2, and we've also on the right-hand side got v2 minus u2. So we can get rid of them. And then also, on the left, we've got v1 minus u1, and on the right, we've got u1 minus v1. So they can go as well. And we end up with this. Uh, v2 plus u2 divided by u1 plus v1 is 1 over 1. Okay. Uh, so if I move u1 plus v1 up to the top there, on the right-hand side, I get v2 plus u2 is equal to u1 plus v1. And then finally, with a bit of... Uh, 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 rearranging the equation, so I get u1 minus u2 is equal to v2 minus v1. And if this is true, then our equation is elastic. So, oh, and I, I just wanted to show you the proof where this thing comes from, but you don't need to learn the proof what I've just shown you. Uh, you just need to remember this. And I was even thinking of a way of remembering it. And if you look, you've got u's on the left, v's on the right, and then it's kind of like a symmetry. So you've got uh, going towards the equal sign, you've got u1 minus u2. So the twos are always closer to the equal sign. Then you've got v2 minus v1. So can you, I don't know if that's making sense, but that might be a way of remembering it for the exam. So the u1 and the v1 are on the outer part of the equation. u2 and v2 are, are close towards the equal sign. And you've got minuses between the, the values. I don't know, maybe that'll help. Okay, guys. Anyway, I hope that's been useful. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye for now.